Being here tonight with you to uh, introduce this award is actually quite personal. 32 years ago, I was a young and very lucky graduate student studying at CK's Knee. And all of us have had teachers who in some important ways have shaped them, but for me, it was really transformational. CK literally changed the course of my life. There's not a chance I would be doing what I'm doing today were it not for the time that we spent together inside and especially outside the classroom. Sometimes when making the case for something bold or risky or extremely difficult, CK would pause in mid-sentence and he'd look down over his glasses and he'd ask a question that still resonates 30 years later. Can you afford not to do this? It was a way of approaching a problem from a different perspective. Or with a deadly look that would send chills down my spine, ignore this at your peril. <laughs> OK. My early years after graduate school were spent with Procter & Gamble, where I had a chance to help lead a very big business for them and had an amazing experience. But now I lead a business called Delight which is the market leader for affordable, renewable, reliable power for consumers in the developing world, specifically in the bottom of the pyramid part of emerging markets. Our products are designed for the roughly two billion people who can't access reliable or affordable power. And our products help them realize that solar power can be as simple to use as a cell phone or as a consumer appliance and give them the chance to have a safer, cleaner, cheaper alternative to kerosene and diesel that's also renewable. Through hubs in Africa, India, China, and a little one in the US, and a network of 10,000 retail outlets, we will reach 25 million consumers this year in 40 emerging markets. <laughs> and we'll enable them to do the kinds of things that you and I take for granted work more, earn more, save money, help their children, study more, get better grades, and have a brighter future. At Delight, our vision for the future of energy is something that I know CK agreed with because we talked about it. It was renewable, distributed, decentralized, not reliant on fossil fuels, not reliant on grid power where everyone can enjoy the freedom and flexibility and quality of life that comes from access to affordable, renewable, reliable power. The numbers are clear and staggering, and we heard about them in the case of water. We've heard about them in the case of so many other aspects of the areas of the environment that you work in. In the case of energy, in emerging markets alone in the next 15 years, Projected demand is roughly a million gigawatt hours worth of capacity above currently available supply. The experts say it'll take $50 billion per year, every year, between now and 2030. But there's just one problem. We're not making that investment. It's not happening. And the interesting thing is that consumers at the bottom of the pyramid and business people aren't waiting. They're taking matters in their own hands. And the consumers that we work with actually have a very different perspective and an unexpected perspective on energy. What they want is clean, safe, reliable, not just affordable. They want quality, not just cheap. Yes, affordability is important, but quality is really important. That probably applies in other product categories than just electricity and power. Our customers see it as an investment in their own productivity, in their family's health, as a chance to lead a more productive life. And it's not a romantic notion. It is cold, hard economics. It's an investment decision. And if a bottom of the pyramid consumer, living on 50 or $100 a month, believes they'll get a strong ROI by investing half a month's or two months income on renewable energy, is it possible that they're onto something? 10,000 times every day, our customers and our network prove the irrationality of fossil fuels. And our model, in our small way so far, has demonstrated that there's not only a bottomless market for renewable energy, but there are some ways that one can begin to build it. Tonight's award focuses on and puts a spotlight on leadership 
in sustainability, innovation, and long-term business success in a globalizing world. And all of tonight's award winners are doing things that we can learn from. I wonder what CK would ask of the rest of us. Can we afford not to engage in the fundamental rethinking and re-engineering that's required to make sustainability or turn sustainability into a competitive advantage? Can we afford not to share the gains of our effort with a broader stakeholder group than just our shareholders or our employees? Can we afford to ignore the future of energy in thinking about how we power our enterprises? 30 years ago, CK fervently believed that large multinational enterprises have the most to gain in pursuing these notions and the most to lose if we don't. And if CK was here, he might just give us that deadly look. Ignore this at your peril. <laughs> now it's my distinct privilege to introduce tonight's winners, the real leaders, the winners of the 2013 CK Prahalad Award for Global Sustainability Leadership. First, we'll show you a short video that'll showcase just a little bit of the contributions that these people have made in their remarkable careers that really exemplify CK's vision. So please enjoy, and after the video, we'll invite them up to stage for some conversation. Thank you.